Hey, welcome to another episode of The Bible Says This, What Say You? Psalms 33, verse 4, the A clause, for the word of the Lord is right. And the particular passage I want to read to you today is from Jude. Jude, verse uh, 7 says, Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities round about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, which is a reference to homosexuality, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Listen, someone said that if we fail to learn from the past that we are bound to repeat it, it is evident, my friends, that we've learned nothing from the past. I believe many preachers today fail to even preach about uh, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, and uh, you got men like uh, Bishop uh, Jakes and others who have actually said, they've said this, that homosexuality is not why God destroyed the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. You're talking about a revisionist. You're talking about trying to twist the scriptures. But the Bible is clear on this. And we see people in North Carolina and businesses uh, throughout America coming against Governor McCory and the Republicans in both the, the Senate and the House of Representatives and 11 Democrats from the House of Representatives who joined the Republicans who voted down a piece of madness that came from the, uh, the Charlotte City Council. It, it's common sense legislation. And the reason I'm talking to you about this today is I just did an interview with WTVD downtown Raleigh and I want you to see it. But I want to add something today. I want to add something today. And it's this. Now, for some of you, this will make no difference at all because you're like you are. But for others, it matters. Do you not know, and you may already know, but the guy leading the charge with this uh, law that was, that this bill that they tried to pull over uh, in Charlotte <clears throat> that would allow men uh, to use the women's uh, bathroom and, and women to use the men's room under name, in the name of transgendered, uh, which there's no such thing, You're either born male or female. The Bible is clear on that. But the guy, his name is Chad Severance. I think I'm saying his name right. Chad, S-E-V-E-A-R-A-N-C-E. -E -E. Chad is the president of the Charlotte Business Guild. He, the, the, the Charlotte Business Guild is a network of LGBT professionals, business owners, employees, and individuals in, Charlotte, in the Charlotte area who meet to nurture a network of business contracts, encourage fellowship and support among community businesses, professionals, and charitable pursuits, and provide and promote positive role models in the LGBT community. But in addition to being over the Charlotte Business Guild, it sounds like an awesome uh, business uh, organization, Chad is a, convic a convicted sex offender. Chad, the man who's behind all of this, our governor, is, having, is, uh, is getting it from all uh, angles. People are coming against him. He's calling him a bigot. You got hypocrite companies like Apple who are, who are, who are speaking against uh, our state. And I'll say this to Apple. If you can do business in China, you can do business anywhere. Don't try to lecture uh, North Carolina on morals if you're doing business in China, the, 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 the country with the, some of the worst human rights abuses in the history of the world. Yes, of the world. Look it up. You'll see what I'm talking about. Look, see what happens when a woman is pregnant with a little girl in China. See what, look at the, the law and, and, and see how they don't allow people to have but a few kids in China. Maybe one, maybe two. Just, just check it out and you'll see what I'm talking about. But back to Chad right quick, and I'm, I'm going to let you go with this. I'm not going to hold you long. But Chad was convicted, and this is not hearsay. This is a part of the public record. Chad was a minister of music or music ministry at New Harvest Church of God in Gaffney, uh, South Carolina. And this man invited young boys, 14-year-olds and 16-year-olds, and, and boys to his house. And Chad would constantly ask the boys, how do you feel about uh, uh, someone performing oral sex on you? This is Chad. 
the man who led, who was leading this march, who many of you, you, you were one of his foot soldiers. Chad was asking the boys about uh, how they feel about him putting their penis in his mouth. And the boys thought it was highly inappropriate. And one night after a revival, this happened in 98, Chad invites the boys over and parents, how about getting a little common sense, okay? Get a little common sense. I, I believe that boys ought to stay home uh, with their parents. So the, the, the little boy, the boys are invited over. They go to bed. All of them sleep in the same bed. That's a, that's a sign right there. That's a sign right there. And the, one of the boys wake up, and old chatty boy is fondling him. And Chad gets convicted in 2000 uh, for what he did. And this convicted, convicted uh, child sex offender is the man who's been leading the charge. And our whole state is uh, in an uproar. And people are talking about bigotry and uh, racism and discrimination. And, and to find out behind the whole thing is a man who is con a convicted uh, sex offender. Now, I'm going to the interview that we did today with WTVD, downtown Raleigh, uh, ABC News, and uh, I'll join you at the conclusion of this interview. What do you think about the uproar? I, I think the uproar is based in, uh, on, based in misinformation and also hypocrisy. We have uproar from companies like Apple who are threatening to pull out of North Carolina but they do business in China. And no country has worse a human rights record than, than China. And uh, many people are saying that this bill is somehow anti-LGBT community, when the, the truth is it's a common sense, bipartisan bill passed into law that simply, simply holds up uh, common sense truth, common sense morals that men born male grown men should use the men's room and women should use the women's room. The truth is a, uh, a transgendered male is a woman and a transgendered woman is a man. Now that is the truth, everyone knows it and there is nothing in this bill that would prevent a man from using the men's room or a woman from using uh, the woman's room. To me, who was about to be uh, discrimi dis discriminated, excuse me, against was uh, women. Uh, uh, women in restrooms who up until now, when they were in the restroom, they had reasons to believe that the person who was in there before they came in or who entered while they were there were of the same sex. Maybe not the same color, maybe not the same size or height or educational background, maybe not even the same religion, but the same sex, and that's all that matters. I mean, you said to me just earlier, I mean, you kind of alluded that it's just, it's, it's, it's dicey, it's putting you, it's putting the majority in a position. Of course, uh, a, a, a lady like, like yourself, I don't think that you would be comfortable in a lady's room uh, taking care of your, your business, and I and, and I walked in with, with, with a wig on or uh, with extensions or whatever, dressed like a lady. I'm self-identifying as a lady, but I am a man. I don't think that you would be comfortable. Even here, you wouldn't believe it. Uh, you wouldn't take me seriously if I said to you, hey, Elena, I'm a white guy. I'm white. I self-identify as white, so therefore I am white. Now you would have to you would have to work hard to keep a straight face. You would <laughs> just as now you you you're chuckling because it's ridiculous. You remember the young beautiful uh, white lady who who passed off. She said she self-identifies being black, working with the NAACP, and look at how the nation, how African Americans, how people just wailed on her, and they said she's white. Her parents said she's white, and she got plummeted in the media. And now, just a few months later, we're supposed to, in the state of North Carolina, uh, throw common sense, truth, and everything else, precedence out of the window and allow legislation to pass that would have reversed years of common sense. I think that the, the bill has been misrepresented. I would say to you, tell me how it discriminates against anyone. And the new definition of discrimination when it comes to the LGBT community 
is to have an opposing view. I don't think that's right. People like me, we're labeled, we're called bigots, we're called homophobes, we're called all kinds of names, names that's not fit for uh, this broadcast, simply because we have a differing opinion and, and our opinion happens to uh, uh, agree with common sense. Common sense. There's one sex per bathroom. Yes, and that's all, it, 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 that's what it's all about. Uh, the last time I read, and, and I am a Christian, but I don't think you have to be a Christian to agree with this. God made them male and he made them female. Now, if we have got, if we're now smarter than the Lord and we can do other things, it's difficult to expect the rest of society to try to uh, adjust to that. I, I, I hear so many people talking about children. I mean, is that one of your concerns as of well? Of course. I'm a granddad. And my grandson, you know, uh, my grandson, my granddaughter, everything at their ages, they're, 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 they're six and five is boys do this and girls do that. Boys do this and girls do that. And, and there are grandparents out there who are watching and parents out there. Children uh, know innately that there's a difference between being a boy and being a girl. And, and my grandson, I don't know how I would explain to him a girl in the men's room. I don't know how my wife would explain to her granddaughter or my daughter would explain to her daughter a, a man in the ladies' room. He's 6'3", he's 6'4". His, his Adam's apple is just like mine. And he's in the ladies' room. And the ladies' room, the door is closed. You know, people talk about uh, uh, protecting the transgendered male or protecting the transgendered female. Well, I tell you, who I would be concerned about is the birth female, the natural female, the biological female who's in the bathroom with the doors closed with a male. He's physically stronger. She's at a much, she's in a vulnerable position, and I don't think that anyone would be comfortable with that. And I think the hypocrisy of these businesses that are out of state, there have been over 340 something businesses that have contacted the governor and have thanked him for this legislation. And I thank the governor, and I hope that the governor and all of those who voted for this legislation will stand their ground because 70% of North Carolinians, we're not making the noise, but over 70% of North Carolinians uh, were for this piece of uh, legislation. I think that sounds good. Thank, Thank you. you so much. I appreciate you having me. What do you think? Did I tell the truth or what? Hey, I want to tell you this too. I spoke to the governor myself. He and I talked on the phone uh, yesterday. Those who support him, let your voices be heard. Let your voice be heard. There's a small group of people who are making a whole lot of noise. 330 something, maybe 340 something business owners have already called the governor and thanked him, thanked him for passing this legislation. The overwhelming majority of North Carolinians, 70%, were in favor of this legislation. But we got some loud people and quite frankly, a biased media who's trying to say, who are misrepresenting uh, the law and uh, you need to let your voice be heard Christians out there those who agree with this law whether you're a Christian or not let your voice be heard don't stand on the sidelines while others uh, like me and others uh, do the heavy lifting we need your help make noise it's already the law but as you know we're being sued the American Civil Liberties Union the ACLU one of the best friends Satan ever had is suing uh, the state of North Carolina, suing our governor. So let's let's let our voice be heard. Let's let the governor know that on this, regardless of whether you are Democrat or Republican, if you believe that men should use the men's room and women should use the women's room, period, let your voice be heard. Ah, the Bible says this. What say you?